Hello, great beer friends, children of Chuko Kikabiyama, children of light. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Please share this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Here is Radio Biafra TV live. Yeah, well, Israel is black white. I want university. Uh, Akaria, a Catalan dozo. Hana Kawalagi, now we have an Nagi and admission. But can I have one day Gana, Nakahani, who hugged it here? Oh, two of us are born Nigeria. One Nigeria among one. Open a head check, one Nigeria among one. I put the money be Afra, Nazo, Nagi and Willow wine. So I say, Eber Hamwe, Eber Gazo be Afra, you will move, where you are, where you are. But can be what I could say, I could say, in the Fulani Boon, do you go and doze or that could say, I could say, in the Fulani Nachi, the federal government, you will not want to put on your beha, a man could say, I could say, and we may be Naja Delta, a man could say, I could say, as you come to Biafra, one lager, when I give me wagon. Can't see where in two thousand and sixteen. Our lawyers, should I say our attorneys in Europe, approached the ICC to make or to present a very compelling case about the human rights abuses being perpetrated by the Nigerian government against the people of Biafra. As you well know, Goran did a very wonderful work. That was in 2016. Also in 2017, additional work was done by our lawyers here in the United States of America. In 2018, additional work was done by our lawyers back home. In 2019, we hired one of the top human rights lawyers in the world to litigate this very matter before the ICC against the Nigerian government. In that same 2019, and as you said, for the, I believe for the very first time, I'm providing clarity on this very matter. I went to the ICC myself. I went to ICC myself. I was deposed. I told them exactly what was happening. They said we shouldn't discuss it when we go outside, and we've been waiting since 2019. We're in 2021. And instead of doing something about the, should I say, the very relentless pursuit of the African people. The Nigerian government has been emboldened, the zoo has been emboldened into killing our people, not just killing us. We have now arrived at a situation where our women are being abducted and raped in the north because ICC failed to do something for how many years now? 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. We hired people in the Bay on a permanent basis, paying them tons of money to be collecting all this evidence against the Nigerian government for the sole purpose of bringing this matter before the ICC, at least for them to investigate. But due to the overwhelming political pressure on them, they have not been able to do anything about it. The only reason why they issued some kind of um, statement a few weeks ago, or should I say a couple of months ago, was because of the NSAS protest. If not, they would have mentioned it. I am in the United States of America, where we've hired a very top lobbying firm at Washington, D.C., at huge expense, I must tell you. You also know about the submissions we made the United Nations, Angela Kalama's report, everyone has read it. We went there, IPOB, she mentioned IPOB and Biafra. You can see that report on human rights abuses in the zoo. I have been to Geneva. I sat down with United Nations officials in Geneva. I have been to the EU. 
Most of them have been to the House of Lords to make a presentation before we're on this course. I have been to Capitol Hill here in the United States of America in Washington to present our case. So where else do you want us to, case, to take our cases to before something is done about it? These are the things that people don't understand. Most of the contracts, most of the work we are doing, you cannot see them. You cannot write about them or talk about them. If not for this very program, I won't be discussing this. But it's about time our people realize that we are doing all we can to present all this catalog of abuse and degradation before the conscience of the international community. But unfortunately, Britain is working for Nigeria. There is a, what's what I call a climate of neocolonialism still prevalent in Nigeria, and they still see Nigeria as a contraption they created. They still see Nigeria as a place they can come to Biafra and take our oil and gas without paying for it. Therefore, anything that can sustain the false unity of Nigeria is what they are going to encourage. They see Biafra agitation as an antithesis to that very plan which they have, which is to keep this contra contraption together for them to have unfettered and unrestricted access to our resources. And that is what has been happening. But unfortunately, our people are not um, um, intelligent enough to understand. Every year we spend money. We have somebody in the egg right now collecting all the evidence, the rape cases, everything, all the murders, all the unprovoked attacks and invasions, everything. But for ICC to call up that very case is another problem. When I say that Biafra is going to be the last miracle on earth, people don't quite understand what I mean by that. Biafra does not know the number of people and forces against them. They don't understand it. Those of us at the cold face of the struggle, deep inside it, we know who our enemies are, and they are numerous. But I am very, very confident of victory because the God we serve is the one that made this very universe, and his words must prevail. And on that very promise, we anchor our hope, we rest all that we are doing to restore Biafra, and we know that in the end that Biafra will come. We have a lot of enemies, you know. We've not done anything to them. Is Biafra that built America? We built this very country that I'm in today. Biafra built the United States of America. The majority of all the hard working free men and women they took from the western coast of Africa, they shipped them to the USA. They are the ones that made this country great. So they see something in us that we cannot see. They know we are very productive, they know we are hard working. But above all, Britain knows that we are blessed. It is that blessing from God that Britain doesn't want to see rise up in Africa. And that is why they are using very primitive felony people to try to suppress us. You saw yesterday that Britain, BBC was advertising army positions, asking you, even telling you what you can get the forms to join the Nigerian army. And I know that BBC functions on, on tax, or should I say, license fee payers money in the UK. They don't accept any advert. So how come BBC Pigeon in Nigeria is advertising for people to join the army of Nigeria for free? Because they are, of course, agents of neocolonialism. They are working for Britain. They want Nigerian army ranks to swell up so they can suppress any measure of uprising against the very decaying, crumbling, damnable zoologic, so should I say zoological republic. What our people need to realize is this. What we go through on a daily basis to ensure that our cases are heard all over the world is immense. Everywhere, especially here in the USA. But if the world continues to turn a blind eye and they continue to kill, to rape, to murder, to slaughter people, to take our land, they expect us to put our hands and do nothing. The answer is no, of course, we must fight. Because we have our backs now against the wall, and that's what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh... On our DK, one of Biafra. Uh, another thing I want to, you know, this is just an introduction to what we are going to discuss this evening. Another thing I want to ask you is that, you know, there is a man called Peter uh, Smithers. 
Because Smithers, in 1998, in 1998, wrote a Nigerian lesson from Sir Smithers. Sir Smithers said, the negotiation that the Nigeria as a state was a grave mistake. After 40 years, it is clear that this was a grave mistake which has cost many lives and will probably continue to do so. It would have been better to establish several smaller states in a free trade area. The escapation, it must be said, that we did not then have the examples of the collapse of Yugoslavia and of the Soviet Union before our eyes. This was a man who was the parliamentary private secretary to the Minister of State and the Secretary of State in the Colonial Office 1952 to 1959. Can you tell us more about what you feel he is trying to do here? What he's trying to do is to draw our attention to the incompatibility of the various ethnic nationalities you have that make up Nigeria, but more importantly, to draw our attention to the irreducibility of value system in determining who should belong with who in any nation. It's quite interesting that he used Yugoslavia as an example. The funniest thing that people don't understand about Yugoslavia is that they are all one Slavic people. They are all Slavic people, as you have with Russia and Bulgaria and all the rest of them. They are all Slavic people. They are one people, one race. They are predominantly Christians. Of course, you have in Bosnia and Herzegovina, during the march of Islam into Europe, that uh, a few of them became Muslim, as, as you have in some parts of Kosovo and also in Albania. What I am trying to point out is this. If people who are one race, predominantly one religion, cannot live together in a country called Yugoslavia, how about people who are from Senegambia? And goodness knows where else not the same language, not the same religion, not the same traditions, not the same culture, absolutely nothing. How can you make these people become one nation is not possible. That is something we've talked about before, that most Africans don't seem to pay much attention to. We are tribal animals by nature. Africans are tribal by nature. That is why every Christmas, every New Year festival, every August, we travel back to the village. Even if you live in Kaduna, somebody will ask you, where are you from? You say, I'm from Ijoma. Because that is where your ancestors come from. In Africa, we come from where our ancestors come from. But white Europeans can travel to Australia and they're comfortable. They're from Australia. They can travel to New Zealand, they're from New Zealand. They're okay with it. But even if you take us to New Zealand and we stay there for a million years, if you ask us where we come from, I will tell from you, babe. That is something that is very unique to Africa and nobody can take that away from us. And that is something that most people do not understand nor have an appreciation for. That is why in Africa, in everywhere you go to be it in Kenya, in Ethiopia, in South Africa, everywhere, people still talk about tribe till tomorrow morning because we are different. So rather than trying to experiment uh, with us in this sort of very colonial, artificial construct, because mind you, all states in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, are all racist constructs. Those that developed or created Nigeria, that created Togo, that created Ghana, they had racism in mind, not your interest. And this is what we've been trying to explain to African people. If not, why would we go to Lagos during a revolution, should I say a mini revolution, a protest? And people of Lagos, the people are saying, oh, the Igbos came here to destroy their buildings. 
But you are all one Nigeria, you play. These are the things that people need to appreciate. We don't want Fulanese in our land for the simple reason that we don't want to dilute. Attention, attention. IPOB, one family. This is now. Can you hear me? Sorry about that. Something just it's okay. What I'm trying to point out, Simon, is this. Forget about all the one Africa. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pan Africanist. But we need to start organically. We need to go back to where we come from and begin to build a consensus from the grassroots. When you Biafra want to join Ududua in forming a nation, we look at all the pros and cons and then reconcile all these things and then we move together as one. Look at Britain that gave. Nigeria, so that colonized and still owns Nigeria till tomorrow morning. Scotland wants to be on their own. Wales will be on their own very soon. Northern Ireland will need to be on their own. That is human nature. You cannot take it away from us. The only reason why they have Nigeria together the way it is, and why we have been complaining, and why authors and great commentators like the man you alluded to, has not gotten any traction in terms of people being able to understand and appreciate what he's saying is because of the way we reason. I say this all the time. William Shainka, Professor William Shainka, um, a, a great literary giant, I would say, came out the other day to say that he is fed up with his war on his doorstep. He knows very well, as an intellectual, so to speak, that the reason why the war is on his doorstep is because Nigeria is flawed. If Udua were to be on their own, do you think somebody will go to, any cow will go to Shoinka's farm to eat the cabbage or the carrot? It won't happen. These are things that we need to understand. That first and foremost, we are tribal animals because life, as we know, is started in Africa. We are attached to the land we come from. That is who we are. Because the white man can be born in England and come to America to settle for life and say he or she is an American doesn't mean we have to follow them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Oyendo. Now let us look, let us now go from the fundamental. Fundamental in the sense that you know when people are hearing that uh, we are detective for Biafra, we want Biafra. Some of them in the West we say the politically elite are not uh, shouting Biafra. That, uh, uh, that there are only those who are in diaspora, you know, like civilized ones, are the ones shouting for Biafra. And this is uh, a fact a lot of people don't know. When you look at it, you find out that 99% of people in, in uh, Biafra are shouting Biafra. 99% of Biafrans in Nigeria are shouting for Biafra. Only 1%, not even up to 1% of this so-called elite, these are the politicians that have benefited from Nigeria. Now, I want us to look at how will disintegrated Nigeria favor the region. Before we come into the crisis and the lives that have been lost as a result of trying to keep one Nigeria, can you tell us how do you think that a disintegrated Nigeria will favor the Fulani themselves, the Hausa themselves, the Middle Belt, the Oduduwas, the Biafrans, and the, any other nation that will want to come out of Nigeria. Explain to us. Let us hear. I, before we, I came on, uh, on this, your fantastic program today, I read a very brilliant piece, or should I say a comment, by somebody. The person said that Nigeria is the only place he knows where yesterday is better than today. Hmm. Ask yourself, at which point in Nigeria's history did they record the highest level of human development it was when they were on their own when they were semi-autonomous regions mm. so there is an already made example there for people to reference should they wish to do so it was when this unitary mindset came into existence that things started to fall apart so if when you were on your own the North was doing very well, or the West was doing very well. Obama had the fastest growing economy in the world at nearly 48% every year. And what did this magic in the West? Now, tell me, you have a simple example. When people were, should I say, semi-autonomous, or should I say autonomous, so to speak, they were doing very well. 
Now you are together in one Nigeria. Everything is falling apart to the extent that people are coming from Mali, from Senegambia, from Niger, from Chad, in the backyard, raping and killing you. It is, it's a no-brain. It's simple common sense. As I said before, that is who we are. Because once you allow an element of stress, an infusion of competition, you get the best out of the people. Right now, we do not have that. Right now, there is no competition. Right now, this thing about one Nigeria, unity, 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 is stifling the creative potentials in us, all of us. The robot is not doing well. The Afro is not doing well. Middle Belt is not doing well. The North is not doing well. Nobody is doing well. Then you ask yourself, all these glorious reference to our past, what period was it? The only period was between 1960 to 1965. And then you had returns. Who can argue with that? So the more you separate, the more you look inwards, the more you look at yourself, the more you become self-reliant, the more you... Do you know that in those days, all the regions that they had embassies abroad? Do you know that? Do you know Eastern region had their own embassies abroad? With their flag? Are you aware of that? Most people don't know this. And that was the, the time that Nigeria witnessed a semblance of growth in terms of human development. Now you have a very, a very, um, um, should I say, disgraceful contraption called One Nigeria. And everybody is struggling. Cows are making your life a mission. If you don't know that going back to autonomy is the best way forward, then there is something wrong with that person. Uh, Oriente, thank you very much. Just uh, because you know everything we do in Biafra, we stand by the truth. We do everything with evidence and fact. Just to back up what you have just said, I told you about uh, 93 pages of uh, uh, application filed to the ICC. Barely yes. few years barely few years of formation of a, of a IPOB because this was in 2016. Barely two years, the, uh, the, the foundation of Nigeria were shaken by the formation of IPOB and the, the activity of the IPOB in Nigeria. So on that ground, this application was filed in 2015, uh, 2016 January. So I am bringing it to the, to the screen now for people to see. Uh, for those who are asking this is number one. The application has been filed 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and this is 2021. And there is nothing to show for it. And uh, there is a place I'm going. I'm going somewhere with this statement I'm making now, which we are going to discuss uh, you know, later on in this program. Now, when you read the introduction here, it says one. This communication is hereby filed to the Office of the Prosecutor, the OTP of the International Criminal Court, the ICC, which one to Article 15 of the Rome Statute, the Statute by Professor Goran Slaughter and Andrew, on behalf of the indigenous people of Biafra, a movement dedicated to self-determination of a former republic of Biafra in southeastern Nigeria, as well as on behalf of 17 individual citizens of Nigeria, the victims collectively, with the IPOB, the petitioner. Two, the petitioner submit that, based on the information set out herein, there is reason to believe that crimes against humanity within the jurisdiction of the ICC, in particular, murder, unlawful imprisonment, torture, enforcement, disappearance, other inhuman acts, and persecution have been committed in the context of politically and ethnically motivated state violence against primarily IPOB members and the uh, Igbo people of southeastern Nigeria. Due to the absence of, demo of domestic criminal proceedings, with respect to those potentially bearing the greatest responsibility for these crimes, in particular, but not limited to Nigeria current President Mohamed Buhari, and that was then, and in the light of the gravity of the act committed. Now, this is 93 pages, 93 good pages. The list can go on and go on. Factual evidences, citations, 
references up to 93 good pages. And of course, like you said in the beginning, that you do not want to discuss this thing because a lot have been done and the people are not aware of it. So just to you know to you know let the public understand you know what uh, what the IPOB have done uh, all this why when people go on social media to say uh, IPOB under leadership of Mazen Amdikano is uh, doing this or they are not doing that. You know, so this is just one evidence of it that as far back as 2016, you have started taking actions which are necessary, lawful and legal actions against the Nigeria terrorist state. But up to now, nothing is happening. But I'm still going to come back to why I am showing this thing because the actions of today is as a result of the failure of the international community to heed to the call of the Biafra people of which you have done honorably well in that aspect. So this is just a side uh, comment on what you have said before. Now, going to what you've just said about how Nigeria, how it will benefit the other region and the, uh, the, uh, the components that makes up Nigeria, how it will benefit them when Nigeria is disintegrated. And you made mention of the, what you read that uh, Nigeria of yesterday that yesterday is better than today. And that is very awkward, awkward uh, fact. You know, very, very awkward fact that every president that comes to Nigeria, the last one will always be better than the new one. It has been, it's not only in the economic sector and all that, but 